All right. So uh, I know it's early for some of you folks, um, but I appreciate you coming out today. So um, I'll dive right into this. And uh, so, so if you read. If you read the slick sheet from FC and it says integrated tactical network and you're, you're expecting to have a rich, deep discussion on the ITN, um, we can, but you have to listen to me talk about the state of the signal regiment first. Um, and hopefully, as I talk about that, it's going to generate enough questions about where we're headed as a regiment that we don't talk about the ITN. Um, but we can if you want. Um, I have no problems doing that. Uh, but. So I'm, I'm Chris Eubank. I am the Commandant of Signal, Signal School, 39th Chief of Signal, uh, Deputy, Deputy Commanding General for the Cyber Center of Excellence for Signal. Uh, and so we'll talk about those three hats here in a second. But I appreciate you coming out today uh, and showing your interest in kind of where we're headed as a regiment, uh, where we were and where we're continuing to go um, as you sit here over the next couple of days and learn about uh, where we're headed from a, a technology perspective. We're trying to match the future signal workforce to where we're headed. So um, without further ado. And I do, have, I do have a panel of experts on the front row. Wow, actually the entire front row that if you ask me something hard, I'm sure they will answer. So, so let's talk about the three hats just so you understand kind of what I do for a living. Um, so first of all, the mission hasn't changed. Uh, the three priorities from, from a year ago have changed. So. Uh, they really are, are kind of people, training, um, and force structure focus. So the first one, optimize the, the branch uh, career fields. The second one, reshape the signal force structure. And the third one, modernize the training environment. So that's where we're focused over the next year. Um, the three hats. So as a chief of signal, so if you think of my three hats on the dot mill PF framework, I now cover every piece of dot mill PFP every piece, to include material, only because General Morrison, when he was the commanding general, and now General Hersey is, has empowered myself and, and Colonel Kraft to be involved in what the Tickums are doing as part of CDID uh, so, that, so that we have a touch point with them. So I do have a touch point when it comes to material now. So, um, so Chief of Signals, all things personnel. So changing MOSs, converging MOSs, promotions, promotion floors, whether or not we're doing well in promotions, um, everything that has to do with a signal, soldier, warrant officer, NCO officer, uh, we do that. That's what I do as the chief of signal. On the far right, uh, Commandant Signal School is all things training and education. So AIT, basic officer leader course, professional military education, whether it's a functional area, um, we do all that. We do the training development. We do the actual instructing. Um, we do all that as a commandant. And then as the, the CCOE DCG for signal, we kind of touched on it. Um, mostly the material piece. So Tickham Networks and Services and Tickham Tactical Radio. So those are the three hats I wear on any given day. Um, bottom line, We've been talking about it for a year. We're going to continue to talk about it. Our, our bumper sticker is at the bottom. It's building leaders, teammates, and communicators. Um, you know, the goal is to, is to create a, a signal soldier that, that understands what it means to be a leader, understand what it means to be a teammate, and then at the very end of it, be a phenomenal communicator. Any questions on my three hats? That's good, because the meat of the briefing is coming up. And I'm sure I'm going to get all kinds of questions. And feel free to ask as we go. We do not have to hold them till the end. So obligatory kind of where we were or where we've been and where we're headed, broken down by proponency and school. Um, I'm not going to cover a lot of this because I think we're going to talk about it over the next coming charts. But uh, uh, so what have we done? We've done phase one of convergence. Uh, we actually, um, security clearances are, are okay in the warrants and okay in the officers, not okay on the enlisted side of the house. I mean, just be up front. We are still fighting through that on the enlisted side of the house every day. Um, and so uh, ComSec realignment, and we did relaunch the Army Communicator. It, it is digital only. We are not printing any, any Army Communicator books. Uh, we're trying to keep up with the millennials and the Generation Z folks, so we're not burning up any paper. So if you want to read it, it is online. Um, from a school perspective, foundational training is continuing to morph and change every day. 
Uh, we'll talk about that here in a sec, what that, what that really means. Um, all 137 of our programs of instruction are up to date now. Um, a year ago, I couldn't say that. So we are, we are now up to date. Compo 1, 2, and 3 have hacked off on them. We got a couple still in the staffing wickets, but they are all up to date. We do have full academic accreditation. Uh, regional signal training sites. Who in here knows what a signal university is? All right, used to be owned by CECOM. I now own them as well, General Hersey owns them, and I execute that on behalf of him. Uh, so they, that's all here now. And then signal training strategy was published, and we're on iteration two of that, and we will continue to update that yearly. What are we working today? Phase two of convergence. Um, we're actually uh, working towards assessing 255 Sierras right, right out of the, the NCO population versus bringing them out of the warrant officer population. We should run our first uh, warrant officer basic course for 255 Sierras in the January timeframe. So that'll help us, help us close the, the gap in the 255 Sierras. Uh, and then VI public affairs merger. So if you're not tracking, 25 Mike, 25 Victor, and 25 Romeo, uh, at least on paper right now, do not belong to the Signal Corps anymore. They belong to the Public Affairs Corps. So 17 MOSs is now 14. And as we talk here in the next couple slides, you'll see in, in the next couple months, at least on paper, we're going to be down to about seven MOSs on the enlisted side. Foundational training refinement, we can do continue refinement. We're going to talk about RSTS and what it means to you and how we're trying to refine the courses there. Uh, if you're not tracking, Fort Gordon is changing. Who here went to school in Greeley Hall at one point? Have you been over there? It's a gravel parking lot, right? It's gone, right? If you're, if, if you're upset because you don't have a picture of it, come see us. We do have a picture of it. Um, we'll even Photoshop you into it. Um, so, but it's gone. And, and the rest of the buildings, we're, we're starting to move out. We're either refurbing them, we're putting them on the docket to, de, to destroy them, and uh, we're moving out on the, uh, on the new campus. Um, consolidation of Brigade and Battalion S6 courses. Uh, what we've done there is we're running two different courses. We now call it the S6 course. So it's, it's one course, not multiple courses. We've taken parts of that instruction, programs of instruction, and put them into Bolick as well as the captain's career course, so that young lieutenants and captains as they leave here have some semblance or sense of what a six does in life. Um, and then they can come back for the course if they wish. But um, that we've got one course. That course, we're working to open it up to NCOICs for, B, for six shops, as well as the warrant officers. So it's no longer going to be an officer thing. It's going to be a team thing. Uh, and then we, we are actually running the same course out at CGSC as an elective, although if you're a signal officer, you must attend, um, so it's not really elective. Um, we did our first one of those in May, and so now every major leaving CGSC is ready to go to a six shop versus having to stop at Fort Gordon for the S6 course. So I'm conceivably getting them to the operational force about five weeks faster. No. ComSec, we are refining... Uh, you know, our program of instruction, uh, we're going from five weeks down to just about four weeks. There'll be some online and then some here at, at Fort Gordon, but it, we're going to level set across the Army. So the one run in Germany and the one run in Korea is going to look like the one run at Fort Gordon or run at Peck in Arkansas. Um, and so we're going to level set that across the board as well. And then Leader development integration, uh, we are in the throes. I'm responsible for all things at Fort Gordon uh, Basic Officer Leader Course. So that's cyber school and signal school. Colonel Kraft is responsible for all things Captain's Career Course. Right? So we are trying to integrate cyber and signal. Uh, the goal is somewhere down the line we've got, we've got folks sitting in the same room. We're running our first pilot right now. We actually have cyber and signal students sitting in the same Captain's Career Course. Okay. So the regiment is a glance. So we are the second biggest branch in the Army, 59,000 of us, Compo 1, 2, and 3. Um, the thing to walk away with from this slide is the chart in the middle. What a lot of people don't realize is that big green portion of that pie chart is all the signal folks in the Army that don't work in signal units. Right? So about 60% of us don't 
reside in an orange formation. We reside in an armor formation, an infantry, infantry formation, an aviation formation. Um, and then the other half, the other part of the pie chart is TDA and signal MTOs. So it's NETCOMs, it's your, it's your signal battalions, it's your signal brigades, right? But 60% of us don't work in signal formation. Okay. That's lost on a lot of people. So we kind of broke, we kind of talked about our annual student load, about 20,000 folks. I would tell you, I think that's growing. It's going to be closer to 24,000. That includes our regional signal training sites, right? We do, we do include those numbers. We track those numbers by site, um, but about somewhere between 10 and 12,000 per year through Fort Gordon. Um, some at Huachuca, and then you see our classes, 200 separate Several courses, about 1,600 classes uh, yearly. Any questions on kind of the regiment at a glance? All right, the meat of the briefing. So how do we talk to the warfighter about what we do for a living? And if you don't like this chart, the 35th Signal Brigade commander is sitting in here, and when he worked for me, he created it. So if you don't like it, he, he's to blame. Um, so how do we talk to the warfighter about what we do? So we, most warfighters understand the people who install cable TV at their house. Right? So that's what we do for a living in simple terms. We are the provider, right? So we are, we are direct TV, the company. That's your Sierra, right? We are the, the hotel. We'll talk about the hotel here in a minute. It's going to be a new MOS coming up. That is the, the network, the WAN. And then when, so to put it in simple terms, you call DirecTV, they send a van to the house. That's the WAN guy, right? And he installs everything and drives away and he tells you everything works. How, how many times has that worked, right? And then you have to call the help desk, the 25 Bravo, because nothing works. And then they send a technician back out to the house. That's the 25 uniform. So we own it from the enterprise to the edge. Right? That's what we do for a living. And we do it for everybody in the Army every day. Right? I will tell you, Eubank's opinion, there's nobody in the Army today that comes to work without a signal soldier. In fact, we're still, we're still checking, but we haven't found an MTO or a TDA in the Army that doesn't have either a signal soldier or a signal civilian on it. We cannot find one, all right? So if we don't come to work, there's a lot of people that don't come to work on any given day. I don't care if it's garrison, deployed, training, but we own it from the enterprise to the edge, and that's what we tell the warfighter, right? The problem right now is the warfighter turns to a signal soldier, and that signal soldier will tell them, sir, I don't do that, I just do this. Right? So that's where we're headed with uh, MOS convergence, which is the next chart. Any, any questions on kind of the direct TV model and what we do for a living in simple terms? All right, so let's talk about MOS convergence. This is a, this is, a year ago, it's a hot, hot topic. I think everybody's starting to understand it. They're starting to understand the method to the madness. Um, and, and I think what people are realizing is we've been doing this informally in the formation for years. Uh, so MOS convergence, phase one. Core functions are at the top, kind of signal operations and information system operations, and then your specialized functions on the bottom. So we're going to start at the bottom because it's easiest. So when we started this process, what we were doing is merging Mike and Victor together. So down in VI, you were going to have one MOS Two MOSs left, Romeo's, repair folks, and Victor's. You can just strike those from the chart at this point. They are gone. They now belong to the Public Affairs Corps. We are working with the Army Public Affairs uh, Command to figure out how they're going to assimilate these folks moving forward. Probably a three-year process to get all these folks moved. But they are, they, we got a DAX order that tells us that these folks now belong to the Public Affairs Corps. All right. So we move up to network security and spectrum management. So 25 Delta and Echo, no changes there. Those are special, specialized folks inside the signal regiment that aren't going anywhere. 
We need them. We probably, to be honest, we need more of them. Uh, we can't grow them fast enough. Um, so, and then when we do, uh, we're having a hard time keeping a hold of them. So those are not changing, echoes and deltas. Let's go to where all the change is happening. So let's start at the top. Signal operations from a tactical communications perspective. 25 Charlies and uniforms are going to merge. I should have started this chart with, hey, so no functions in the signal core are going away. No functions are going away. Somebody in the regiment is going to perform a task. Right? So every Charlie task that's out there is going to be performed by a uniform. Charlies will come off of MTOs, and where there was a Charlie on an MTO, it will just say 25 uniform. No slots are going away. No functions are going away. So Charlies will merge with uniforms. Below that, Papas, Tangos will merge with Sierras. So once again, those functions aren't going away. The Sierra is going to perform those functions. And where there was a Papa or a Tango on an M2, it will be a Sierra. All right, so that's all phase one. So if we're down from 17 to 13, if you don't take VI out of the picture, you take VI out of the picture, we're, we're below 13 at this point, down about 10. Okay, any questions on phase one? And, and just so everybody knows, if you're not happy with this, I apologize, but the toothpaste is out of the tube, and we're not putting it back. This is done. This is signed, approved by the Department of the Army, and, and, and in 2022, this will be a reality, phase one. Yes, it will, and, and I would tell you right now, our biggest concern is the civilian side of that garrison side. So all your civilian visual information folks is, is where we're concerned the most. That's where, to be honest, the military piece is the easy piece of this. Uh, when, when briefing General Crawford and Mr. Garcia on this, that was the biggest concern, was the civilian side of this VI merger, VIPA merger. So we are paying particular attention to that, but it, it will affect that. Does that answer your question? No, they get trained at Fort Meade. And they will continue to get trained at Fort Meade. They will just, three years from now, instead of being 25s, they'll be 46-something. So any questions, any other questions on phase, phase one? All right, so phase two. So you see the bottom, VIPA merger. Um, and, and then the only other change here, probably the biggest change we're doing is 25 Novembers, Quebecs, and the outside plant functions of a 25 Lima are going to merge with the, with the capper MOS of Whiskey and form a new MOS called 25 Hotel. The inside plant functions of a 25 Lima are going to merge with the Bravo. All right. So once again, no functions are going away. Other people are going to do them. All right. And so I kind of said up front, this is something we've been doing informally for years. If you take yourself back to a BCTS 6 section, we were cross-training everybody in that section. Right? Bravos were doing uniform work. Uniform were doing Bravo work. Right? Sarahs were doing each other's work. So we've been doing it informally for years. We're just formalizing it. And, and really, um, by doing this, creating a more multidisciplined signal soldier. So that's the biggest muscle movement in phase, in, in MOS convergence as a whole, to be honest. But it's, it's really the biggest in phase two is we're creating the hotel, and we're going to converge all these MOSs. And by the time we're, we're done, we're down to seven. Seven MOSs on the signal enlisted side from 17.
So I'm major, you want to take that one? So, so not to just quickly brush past it, though. So that's an MTO change, which can be done. And instead of a whiskey, you're going to be looking at hotels, right? So if you think it's a whiskey today, it will be a hotel tomorrow. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. But that, that's something we can work from an MTO perspective, not necessarily from an MOS perspective. Does that make sense? Okay. So, so 17 to 7. Um, multifunctional, multidisciplined signal soldiers that will solve signal problems. So when the warfighter turns around and says, hey, Eubank, do this, Eubank doesn't say, hey, sir, I don't do that. I only do satellites. They're actually going to be able to solve the warfighter's problem. And how are we going to do that? So we're going to do that through foundational training. So this is ongoing. It gets refined, I think, every course. So what is foundational training? So so six MOSs as of right now, it, you see them down at the bottom. Really, that will be the four MOSs, because if you really think about it, what we're talking about in the seven MOSs is four AIT MOSs, two specialty MOSs, and a SAR major. So think about that. So a SAR major, a Delta, an Echo, and four basic MOSs. So right now, it's six MOSs feeding foundational training. It will be four. But what they do is they come to Fort Gordon. We pull them off as a class. We just visited one yesterday, 25 uniforms. Um, and they get, they get an IP foundation. So they spent four weeks learning everything you think you should need to know as an IT soldier. Even desktops and laptops, as crazy as that sounds, right? Yeah, we actually teach them desktops because we want them to understand the working of a computer. What is RAM, what is ROM, what's a hard drive, what's a motherboard. They actually take these computers apart, they put them back together. They have 16 routers, 16 switches, 32 printers, wireless access points, and by the end of the four weeks, they have learned to make Cat5, Cat6 cables, and they can put that entire network together. Doesn't matter the MOS right now. Right? And so, in the future, they're going to do it. In, they do it under white light now, and in the future, we're going to take them to the field and make them set the talk up in the field as well. And after they're done, they go off to their MOS producing course. They have to get through this to go to their MOS producing course. All right. So that is foundational, foundational, foundational training in a nutshell. It is ongoing today. Um, like I said, it gets revamped about every cycle to make sure we're doing the right thing. It is a hands-on and virtual environment, so when half the class is actually working on a physical box, router, switch, printer, whatever it might be, the other half of the class is doing it virtually. So they are programming routers, they're doing subnets, um, they're learning you know, the OSI model and all that stuff. Right? And it is... It is about four or five instructors to about 25 students. <coughs> yes, sir. No, I don't have that fear. You know why I don't have that fear? Because this, this generation is already there. This generation is already there. I will tell you, they are... So my fear now is i got to get E6s and E7s comfortable with the fact that their soldiers know more than they do. This is a paradigm shift. So the bottom line, sir, right? So we are going to require that they know more. Not do more, but know more, right? Because they're still going to have the same amount of folks on that team to assist them to do whatever the function is attached to. But we are going to... We need Now they're 
Yeah, like I said, I, I'm probably more concerned with us old folks. Um, I, and, and I've heard it numerous times. I've traveled a, across the globe, and I can't tell you the number of E6 and E7 that are concerned with the fact that the, the private coming out of Fort Gordon right now is ahead of them. And they've, they're just going to have to understand that. And, and they're going to have to... They're going to have to suck down some pride and actually have a conversation with E3s and E4s about, hey, how did you do that? So um, I'm probably more concerned about the, the older generation. No. So any, any, any other questions on, on foundational training, kind of how, how we started? Because the next slide, we're going to kind of talk about where we're headed. And I'm hoping to generate some kind of discussion on where we're headed. Okay, so where we're headed. So left to right, Signal Common Core, what we call foundational training. We think that's growing in the future. It's four weeks today. We think as we do MOS convergence, that could be 10 weeks. We're going to add stuff like fiber in there. We're going to add stuff like radios in there. Um, and then at some point, they will break out and do functionally aligned training. So hotels and Sierras together, Bravos and uniforms together. And then from there, they'll break out into MOS-specific training, and it'll all end up in an integrated learning event called an FTX. Um, and then they're going to show up to the operational force ready to knock it out of the park. Right? We don't know the time for this right now. What I can tell you is foundational training is four weeks, and if you're a 25 uniform, you're here for 19 weeks. And, and, and so... Um, but that four weeks is in that 19 weeks, so a uniform is here for 19 weeks. Is 19 weeks right, or is it 12 weeks, or is it 22 weeks? We don't know. But what we do know is we have got to get to a model like this so that this multifunction, multidiscipline signal soldier is ready to hit the operational force, ready to solve problems. So this is where we're headed as a, as a schoolhouse. Um, and, you know, so our major will tell you at some point, this is, you know, that, that first piece is the basic communicators course. This is going it, to, it, it will be the foundation for everything we do in the schoolhouse moving forward. Good, there's no questions. That's good. Any questions, concerns, comments on this? All right? This is where, yeah, go ahead. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Thank you for that lead-in, Brett. I'll pay you later. <laughs> right. So you take that model, and this is what I own from, from a university perspective. I say that very carefully because General Lundy would punch me in the throat. Because um, there's only one university in the Army. It's the Army University of Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. But, so this is, this is our university, as we like to call it. So, your main campus is here at Fort Gordon, and we have 12 regional signal training sites, formerly known as signal universities. Those belong to me now, right? And here, here, here was the charter I was given a year ago, and that is, hey, you have to improve the quality of the training, you have to improve the quantity of the offering, and you're not allowed to take any flexibility from the operational commander. Okay, I got it. So I would tell you what, we're improving the quality. How are we doing that? We're baselining everything they do. So everything they teach at a regional signal training site is based on something that comes out of Fort Gordon now. If you go to Fort Bragg or Fort Hood and look at HF training, there is a baseline package now. Couldn't say that a year ago. In fact, if you really, if you really wanted good HF training, you went to Fort Bragg. That's where the best HF training was happening. Um, and there's probably a reason for that. Uh, but, but it's all baseline now. And we're very careful. Nothing done at a regional signal training site is called a programmer of instruction. It's all lesson plans and training support plans. And there's a method there because if I call it a POI, as Ed Buckner would tell me, now I'm in a trade out process that will take me three years to fix if I want to fix it. So I'm very careful about what I call what we do at the regional signal training sites. So everything's a lesson plan and a training support plan. But it's all baseline here at Fort Gordon. Our training developers, I have two training developers. So I have an entire section inside the schoolhouse. It's uh, 05 and 13 DA civilians that run this apparatus for the Army. 
manage the contract, make sure DA civilians are getting paid, um, make sure they have resourcing, they have desks and chairs and, and the like, all done right here at Fort Gordon. But those DA civilians and contractors at Fort Riley work for that division commander. They do not work for me. If that division commander shows up and says, hey, I want to run a SEC plus class and I only have two students, guess what? We're going to run a SEC plus class for two students. All right? So we're, we're baseline it so we can improve the quality. Quantity, 53 offerings as of today, growing uh, probably around 60. Um, and we teach everything from SEC plus to green box radios to we're adding HBSS and ACAS and things like Security Onion and, um, and those type of things to this. So the way we're doing this is, uh, is, is contract based. Um, and, and right now, we will teach whatever is asked for. We teach advanced Microsoft Word, if you can believe it. Yes, ma'am. All right, so, so let's talk about Korea. Yes, we're in discussions about setting up an RSTS in Korea. You, sir, PAC, owes me some answers. I want to help out the 2nd Infantry Division. I want to help out the Penn. Uh, USER PAC supports them, and what USER PAC has told me is they don't need their own. I'm, hey, take it for what it is. That is what USER PAC has told me based on statistics. I'm neither here nor there. If the pen needs one, we're ready to set it up. We're looking at the pen. We're looking at Fort Drum. Fort Drum is the only division that doesn't have their own. They do everything via mobile training teams and Fort Bragg, North Carolina. So we're looking at, we're looking at, uh, at Fort Drum. We're looking at the pen. We are looking at Europe. All right, we had a discussion with the USER G6. Uh, they run a thing called Army in Europe Information Technology Training. They have eight campuses, mostly focused on things like PMP and SecPlus. Um, we, have at, we have offered up to them setting up one at 7th Army Training Command uh, to help them out. So more about that. So this potentially grows from 12 to 15 over the next coming years. I believe the pen will get one. I believe it's needed. I'm, I'm letting USERPAC do their homework. I told him I wouldn't step on him. Uh, I think Drum needs one. Drum's issue right now is a facility, because until you have a facility, uh, I mean, I can't do a whole lot. And then USER is still trying to decide if they want one or not. And I'm trying not to step on toes. Um, but we put as many soldiers through these 12 campuses every year as I put through Fort Gordon. So if you think 24,000 round number, I put 12,000 through Fort Gordon. I put 12,000 soldiers through RSTSs every year. Everything from HF training to JBCP to SEC Plus to um, PMP, Advanced Microsoft Word, 12,000 a year. Little known fact, our SEC Plus pass rates are actually better at the RSTSs than they are at Fort Gordon. By a lot. I think the average pass rate at the RSTS is somewhere around 78%. Here at Fort Gordon, it's about 38%. And we can talk about that if you want. I'll give you the dynamics of why we're struggling here at Fort Gordon. Um, but this is an apparatus that, that helps the force every day. This is not going anywhere. But I would tell you what, I'm not going to violate rule number three. The operational commander owns this. They own it. I'm not going to change anything without talking to them. I'm not going to not conduct classes. Um, they own it. And they pay for it. This comes out of their operational funds. Now, we are trying to figure out how to centrally fund this. Uh, more to follow. We're working with TRADOC to figure out how to centrally fund it. TRADOC and Forcecom, to be honest. Um, so... Any other questions on regional signal training sites? And I think I have a slide that kind of talks stats. So here, here, here it is in a nutshell. Oh, and just so you know, that team of 13 here at Gordon, if you don't have training and you want training, if you call that team, 
They will figure it out. We have sent mobile training teams all over the world. We just sent a, a team to Korea and, and did Sec Plus for them. I think it was about 40 students, and they're starting to take their test. And so far, I, it, last note I got was we were about four for four. So four took it, four passed. That's pretty good. I don't need anybody else to take it. Right now, it's 100%. That's good. Um, so, uh, but, so here, here's kind of the, the stats. We're, and just some basics on and what, we're, what we're teaching the top five classes. But we're, we've sent out smart T mobile training teams. Um, we've done SEC plus for compo two and three units. Uh, so we're not, we're not saying no. And I, I, I apologize, I probably should have highlighted. So if it's green, it's regular army. If it's blue, it's National Guard. And if it's this yellowish color, that's reserve. And the goal is all that's the same. So if you're, if you're an active duty soldier, you can show up at Arkansas to pack and take a course. That is the way it is today, right? You can, as an active duty soldier, if you have a fun site, you can show up to Little Rock, Arkansas and take courses. Each, each one of these RSTSs has their own ATARS account. They manage the seats. Right? They don't have to call Fort Gordon, Mother May I. They manage the seats every day. All right? I should have, I should have said that up front. But the goal is compo one, two, and three. It doesn't matter who you are. You show up to a location and take training. All right? Top five classes. But like I said, 53, almost 60 offerings at this point. I'm not sure there's... Well, there's always something we're probably not training, but, I mean, the fact that we're training Microsoft Office is, I mean, should tell you something, but we are. We are. Hey, sir, since you mentioned that, that's what you're currently offering, how often do you relook at adding new classes, like, say, cloud or, you know, looking towards the future? So we're looking every quarter right now, but to be honest, the way we're adding courses is, is field demand, right? Somebody calls up and goes, hey, I think we should be training X. The team looks at it, they come down to me and go, hey, sir, we got a request for cloud. Okay, add it to the mix. And the goal is to create an approved products list, for lack of a better way of putting it, so that you, can, you get this, the same offering everywhere. So Fort, Fort Carson can't say, I'm not teaching. So little known fact. You go to one RSTS, they only teach 9 of 53. You go to another RSTS, right now they're teaching 53 of 53. You go to another RSTS, it might be 20 of 53. The goal is all 53 will be offered at all locations. Does that make sense? But right now it's demand. That's how we added HBSS and ACAS and all that stuff. We were not teaching that. The demand came in from the field, so we're, tra we're trying to figure out how to add that in the mix. Does that make sense, Chief? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so there's a list. 56 is what we're up to. Not all of them are there, but you can, I mean, Splunk, and we do Certified Ethical Hacker. Um, but if you don't see something there, and you think it's needed, it's the good of the Army, good of the Signal Regiment, all you have to do is call the RSTS team and say, hey, I think we should be looking at this. They're going to take a look at it, bring it down to me, and, and then we'll go from there. I don't think I've said no to anything yet at this point. I've actually tried to take things off of RSTS, like, advanced Microsoft Word, um, you, can, you can YouTube that, and, and yet we're paying money for it. And so, yes, I'm trying to remove some of those things to create space for other things. But I haven't yet, because an operational commander has told me there's a need. So, signal training strategy. This document's about 22, 24 pages long. It's your document, um, really written by you guys for, oper for maneuver commanders. Right? So, um, you know, demand from the field was, hey, I got this signal unit, and I'm not sure what I really do with them. I put them on guard duty and KP. And, uh, and so this document, 22, 24 pages long, really lays out um, what a BCT commander or a BEB commander should be doing with that signal formation. Collective training, maintenance. Uh, we, have, we have signal assessment tables. Um, we, are, we are working... Um, working with the Army 
to take a deeper look at these signal assessment tables and try to better align them to gunnery tables uh, moving forward and then set a standard across the signal regimen. So it doesn't matter um, what type of signal unit you're in, the, the assessment tables look the same. And they match up to a maneuver commander. So when a maneuver commander is doing table eight, a signal unit should be doing table eight. Right. But this is your document. I signed it right before I left for Capstone. It gets signed every year in July, and will get signed again in July of next year. It will go out for worldwide staffing in December of next year for comment and improvement, and we'll do that every year. So on iteration two, iteration three, we'll go out for staffing in December, and we'll sign it again in, in uh, June, July. But this is your document, right? and we want it to make a difference to those maneuver commanders. Along with this, what we've been doing is I send a team out to Fort Leonard Wood who sits in the engineer pre-command course and talks to BEB commanders for two hours about the signal company inside their formation. We just started doing that down at Fort Benning with the uh, BCT commanders. So they understand what that signal company does inside their formation. All right. Any questions on the signal training strategy? All right. So that's it. There's points of contact. Um, I would like to think I can escape you, but I can't. I am on the global. Um, if you grab the first address, that's my one at SOCOM. Feel free to send mail there. I will not answer that mail. Um, in all honesty, tell us what we're doing right. Tell us what we're doing wrong. Right? We are trying to be as transparent as we can be at the schoolhouse. I think, I think we've been to almost every division at this point. We're minus about two divisions, um, two or three. We use those opportunities to travel around the regiment talking to signal soldiers, uh, talking to leadership, division you know, leadership about what we're doing, where we can help. Um, but we are, we are moving out. And, and if, if you think we're doing something wrong, you've got to tell us. We're trying to be as transparent as possible. All right, and, and so I told you I wasn't going to talk about ITN. Yeah, what's up, Brett? So I don't know, Battle Lab dude. You tell me. <laughs> um, so here's, here's, here's my take on that. I think Gordon's going to get plugged into this environment. And I think, uh, I think from a schoolhouse perspective, you as the former G6 of the CCOE actually set us on a path that our, our training architecture is going to get plugged into the STE and it's going to provide richer training across Fort Gordon from a cyber signal school perspective, right? Not just a signal school perspective, but I think the goal, General Hersey as the commandant and I, and now General Colonel Kraft and I are putting in motion is these FTXs are all encompassing, right? So they are, they are signal soldiers putting in networks. They're cyber soldiers looking at networks. Um, right now, it's, it's kind of a mixed bag. And, and so, and I would tell you, up until probably about four months ago, we were going out to the field and setting up an architecture and not drawing any services. Your team has allowed, allowed us to draw services. So now lieutenants are going to the field, setting up an architecture, and actually pulling services from Fort Gordon, BCCS services. Right? So they understand that ones and zeros are flowing. Um, but I think, the, I think the synthetic training environment is just going to enhance that. And they, oh, by the way, it's going to plug us to every other COE or any other force comm installation that wants to get involved in a in a, a training, training event. Um, so I, I, think, I think there's goodness in that. Um, I'm, I'm looking at General Pugh to make sure we're going to have the pipes to support it because uh, I, I, think, I think it's going to be bandwidth intensive as we fire this up because if you just think about Fort Benning and soldier lethality and, and you know, goggles and oculus and the data flowing off of you know virtual reality stuff i mean this is it's going to be an interesting interesting uh game changer for the future does that answer your question and i just know you're responsible for it at the battle level so if i need it i call you
What else? Nothing else. It's an easy crowd. It's good. Does anybody? Yeah. Look at that, see? It worked. <laughs> so, so we're, we're redoing our uh, advanced, basically advanced courses. Uh, part of that is driven by this 55 0 that still has. Uh, we are looking to make sure that we do not lose any core capabilities going forward. So that we're making sure that our basic course and advanced course drivers are prepared to go out to that. Did he answer your question? No? Okay. I'll counsel him later. All right. um, I think the biggest change on the warrant officer side is that we're, we're actually looking at it the way we've been looking at it officers, at, at officers for forever, right? So, uh, you know, what Garth and the team have done is said, hey, where should a warrant officer one be? Where should a two be? Where should a three be, a four be? And where should a five be, right? I think in the past it was kind of this mixed bag. We're formalizing that in, in, in Army regulation now. So we're, we're trying to define what is a key and developmental position for a warrant officer and what's a broadening assignment for a warrant officer, just like we do on the officer side. Um, and by doing that, what we're seeing is, hey, if you're a W01, you just need to plan on living in a division, right? There's going to be some that are in signal battalions, and, but I think if you're... You just need to get in your head right now. You're going you're gonna to shoot, move, and communicate with the Big Red One, the 82nd, the 1st Cav. I mean, that's what you're going to do. And then we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna mold you and develop you and move you up. Uh, but but I, think, I think that's probably, for, for me, that's probably the biggest change on the warrant officer side of the house is we're, we're trying to look at how we do officer development and match that warrant officer development to it. And then just from an S6 perspective, the fact that we, we as a regiment, we as an army thought the S6 was a person versus a section or a team for, I don't know, the Signal Corps is 159 years old, um, it's just beyond me. And, and the only people allowed to go to the S6 course were officers. It's just dumbfound, dumbfounded me. So we're opening it up. Because last time I checked as a 6, I didn't do a whole lot, right? There were, there were some warrant officers and NCOs doing a whole lot, right? I, I stood in front of people and took some face shots, but I wasn't doing a whole lot to make sure services were delivered. And, um, yeah, I'm sure I checked the boss's phone to make sure it had dial tone. Um, but I think, I think that's another monumental shift for us is, I mean, as we look at the regiment, okay, what do we do for a living? Uh, so... I think that's huge for us as we add warrants and NCOs into the, uh, into the S6 mix. What else? Nobody's got any burning capability slash equipment questions. I have the 35th Signal Brigade Commander here to answer all kinds of questions for you. <laughs> Nothing. Nobody's concerned. Yeah. So, 
So, so if you take what I just said and you think you're going to a division, um, the first thing I would tell you is you better get smart on everything we forgot about, right? Push to talk radios, um, simple platform. I say simple platforms, JBCP. Um, yet, of course, you got to know BCCS stacks and all that mix. But I tell you, as a, as a person going to a division, if you can't make a Singars work or a 117 Fox work, you're going to be in trouble, right? Uh, that's just the nature of the business we're in right now. Uh, if you look at large-scale combat operations, I think you need to know that business. Having said that, I think you've got to make the mental leap from a push-to-talk radio to artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data analytics. Because um, here's the deal. The officer you're supporting is reading that stuff but isn't going to be deep enough to execute that stuff, right? Um, you know, we had a great discussion on Monday a bunch of us sat in a tabletop exercise and we talked about data, right? I would tell you, I think data is the future. Whether we're moving it, we're securing it, um, we're storing it, data is the future. And so if you understand data and, and all its intricacies, I think you're gonna be light years ahead of a lot of us. But I tell you, I look at, I'm probably more concerned about that today as we talk about large-scale combat operations, we talk about um, three corps, nine divisions, 27 BCTs in the fight. Who's managing that data? How much data is in a division? Terabytes. Just somebody guess. It's a, it's a metric ass ton. <laughs> right? That is a doctrinal term. It is a lot of data. So let's think about six, nine divisions, right? and somebody's got to move data between division X and division Y. Who's doing that? Right? It's not the G6. It's the team of warrants and NCOs behind that G6. It's that core signal brigade. It's that expedition signal battalion enhanced. It's, it's that, that division signal battalion, if, if, if we get there, right, is doing that business. Right? Data, data makes me nervous as the chief of signal. Does that make sense? I hope that helps. I mean, I, I'm not giving you a whole lot. I would tell you, you've got to be a jack of all trades, and unfortunately, as a warrant, you've got to master them all. Right? Because I'm going to be the jack of all trades, master of none. I'm going to know just enough to give you some guidance and direction, and then I'm, I'm fire and forget. I'm going back to the, to the S3 shop and making sure everything that they're planning, we can support. Um, and, and the world's changing. The world is changing. 5G, right? Low Earth orbit, MEO. But all that's doing what? It's all moving data. That, and, and oh, by the way, none of us are doing anything if we can't get to the data and use it, right? That, that probably makes me the most nervous right now. I just, did I scare you? OK. All right. I kind of scared myself, so. Yes, sir. So that's a great question. So, so from a signal regimental perspective, um, we, we, along with the Army G8, have been struggling with data scientists slash data, data analysts for, I don't know, the last couple of years. Just this past year, we kind of have all come, come to an agreement that there's a group of folks that analyze data. And right now, um, not a lot of those are resident in the signal regiment. They are resident in the ORSA community. Um, and so in, in what we call data, the, the life cycle of data, we believe there's an owner, somebody who creates it on one end of the spectrum, uh, some, and, and just because of the way we did our model. On the other end of the spectrum is somebody who's analyzing it, and right now it's that ORSA community. Um, and in the middle of that spectrum is what the signal regiment owns, and that's transport, storage, security, right, of the data. Uh, so right now it's a community, uh, some signal folks, some ORSA folks that we've given additional training to to analyze data, but that is going to morph over the next couple years. It really will. Um, we in the signal regiment are, are concentrating on the middle portion of that. Um, not that we won't step into the analytics of it, but 
but right now we're focused from a from a schoolhouse perspective we're focused on how do we move it how do we store it how do we secure it um, and the creators can create it these guys are going to analyze it we get paid to make sure they can do all that does that make sense so what else yeah say it can sir we got Colonel Kenner up to 18 there we'll report that to you six uh, sir with the MOS convergence how is that going to affect the uh, minimum GP scores for entry level coaches and or their enlistment training um so that's something we're still working through um I think uh and I've got a panel of experts right up here, but um, Eubanks' opinion is it's going to change. We have got to figure out what that means to us. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure enlistments change or not at this point, uh, honestly. Uh, but I, we do know, we do know, we've got to take a look at this, the tests and the test scores. But as Sergeant Major said kind of earlier, I would tell you, um, we've been selling these folks short for a long time. A, I got, so my biggest concern in all this for phase two was Lima's, right? right? I think everybody gets that, right? So I would tell you, I just went to the Lima course. And I pulled, I pulled soldiers and I pulled instructors. So I had an E7 and an E6 and I had two privates. And I talked to them separate. Hey, so what if I told you we were doing this? But, Sir, I'm all in. I'm all in. I got it. I can do it. Then I went to the old dudes. Right, the ones I told you make me nervous earlier, right? And I said, "Hey, what do you think?" He's, you know what that that sergeant first class said to me. So I've been doing it for years. You didn't train me to do it. I got to a unit and they said, "You better know how to do this because if someone if so and so gets sick, you're on it." I was like, "Okay, I feel better about this." Now, that doesn't mean we don't have to change test scores, but I would tell you, I think we've been selling these soldiers short for, especially this new generation. They are hungry. And they don't want to be the person just, they don't. They want to be the person that goes like this and goes, hey, I got this. Sir, your email's working. They do. You know, General Funk kind of said it yesterday in his pitch. I mean, they, they want to serve. They want to be a part of something, but they're not going to seek it. That's this new generation, right? You have to go get them. But once you get them, they, they want to do it. They really do. I'm, I'm convinced. As I watch these new kids train here at Fort Gordon, they scare me because they're wicked smart. They are wicked smart. Yes, Army. Sir, if I may. Yep. Um, also, as we have begun to brief uh, MOS convergence to all of our ALC and uh, Army Corps and Air Force and Marine Corps leaders and drug leaders are going back to the operational force, and they're already beginning to yeah. prepare these soldiers that may face challenges as they begin uh, their, their transition. And I will tell you, Many of the 25 females are already um, going after the yeah. stuff and everything else to improve their scores to, to provide them that competitive advantage for whichever lane they have to, uh, to accept as we move forward. So they're already on it. They're hungry. They want what we are offering them already. So. Yeah, so Sergeant Major said it best to me yesterday. So what I would tell you is I've given you the book, I've given you the test, and I've given you the answers for the next two years. Right? So I would tell you, based on what we're doing and what you know, if we're not taking advantage in the operational force of getting ahead of this bow wave 2022, we're missing the mark. So, so the bottom line, right, is that we've been doing what, what the future of the regiment as it relates to it, the mission and the is nothing different than what we've been doing for the last 20 years. It's really not. It's just now that we are really going to our
Yeah, and so, so to kind of build upon that, um, we, also do, we also believe that the current force is not all coming back to Fort Gordon at one time TDY to get reclassed, right? So I just showed you 12 locations called RSTSs that are going to be in that mix, right? And so the goal is, and the t this is how to the, the period we are on this right now, um, we have figured out that there's only really one MOS that potentially has to come back to Gordon to get reclassed, right? 25 Bravos. Other than that, all this can be done distance, right? And some commander is going to validate that they, they're good and they're going to get reclassed. Um, so you, I can't, I can't, you can't, the Army can't afford to bring 59,000 folks back to Fort Gordon to retrain them. So there's an apparatus we're going to, you know, use to get after that. But I would tell you, I, I, think, I think we're in a good place. Our one concern is the Lima. And I think we are, if you just talk to those folks today, most of them are doing it anyway. Um, so, uh, and as, as we move to the new model and we add more stuff to foundational training, we're going to start level setting everybody, right? Everybody will know how to do fiber. Everybody's going to know how to do cat five, six. Um, so, does that answer your question again? Okay. What else? I think, I think I'm actually out of time. But I'll take one more if anybody's got anything. No? Nope. Hey, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Have a great day. Yeah, how you doing? Good, sir.